Hi, and thanks for stopping by to check out the Pinball Mike D Creature Hologram Mod. In this video, I'll walk you step by step through the entire installation process, but before we get started, let's first take a closer look at what the mod actually includes. Okay, so for starters, we have a 19-inch Insignia LED TV. Now this particular TV comes with a 720p HD monitor and it comes equipped with an HDMI port as well. So that enables us to display true high-definition graphical animations throughout gameplay. The TV also features a battery-powered remote control enabling the end user to access the TV's setup menu without ever having to lift the play field once the TV has been installed. In addition to the TV, you'll find a set of printed circuit boards. This board configuration includes our proprietary interface module designed specifically for this mod, as well as a Raspberry Pi controller, which is what we're using to display all of our graphical animations on the TV. Our mod also includes a custom designed TV mounting stand fabricated out of 1 8 inch mild steel and powder coated in a professional wrinkle black finish. Next we have the game's interface harness. This is how we connect our mod to the pinball machine. So on one end of the harness we have two Molex connectors that plug directly into our interface board and at the other end of the harness we have several connectors that are used to connect our mod directly to the power driver board in the back box. The small wire harness you see here is used to provide 12 volt DC power to the TV via the coin door interface board. In addition, we also have an SD card as well as a short HDMI cable used to connect the Raspberry to the TV. And finally, we have a small bag containing some miscellaneous hardware items, but more on that stuff later. Okay, so let's get started. First things first, I'm going to power down the pinball machine and unplug it from the wall. I uh, always try to avoid working on pinball machines when they're powered up because it keeps me from doing something stupid like shorting uh, you know, something out with one of my tools or getting myself shocked. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is remove the playfield glass and eject all three balls from the ball through assembly. At this point, I could now safely raise the playfield and begin the installation process. However, before I can install this mod, I'm going to have to remove the old hologram system components from the pinball machine. That means I'm going to remove the following items. Number one, the hologram and its associated mounting bracket located on the bottom of the playfield. Number two, the mirror motor assembly located inside the cabinet next to the transformer. And number three, the mirror motor's triac board, which is mounted on the left inside wall of the cabinet right next to the mirror assembly. Okay, so as you can see, the hologram bracket is attached to the playfield using three mounting tabs. There are two longer standoff posts at the top of the bracket, one on the left and right side respectively, and then there is a larger tab on the bottom of the bracket located behind the actual hologram motor. So first I'm going to disconnect the hologram motor from the playfield harness. Then I'm going to secure the two white and blue striped wires used to power the motor at the closest harness hook. Now I don't want these wires to get caught on something when I raise and lower the playfield in the future, so I'm going to use two of the smaller wire ties provided with the mod to ensure that those wires remain safely secured to the harness and out of the way. Now I can use a quarter inch nut driver, preferably one with a longer extension on it, and I'm going to remove all of the number six screws used to attach the hologram mounting bracket to the bottom of the playfield. Now of course I don't want the bracket to fall while I'm removing it, so I would definitely get an extra set of hands 
uh, have a friend help me hold the bracket in place while I remove all of the screws. And of course, it's you know always easier to do this type of work when you have an extra set of hands. Okay, so I've got the hologram and its associated mounting bracket removed and out of the way. Now I want to do something to address all of the holes in the bottom of the play field where the bracket was physically mounted. So in my experience, I found that once you start playing the game and some of these coils start firing, it's going to vibrate the play field and you're going to have wood dust fall out of these holes and that's going to fall onto the TV screen. Now, I don't really want to have dust all over my TV screen, so I found the easiest thing to do is to take some 3M painter's tape and just cut some small pieces of that painter's tape and apply that to the play field, covering the holes where the bracket was mounted. Okay, so now I can remove the mirror motor assembly located inside the cabinet. Now, just like the hologram motor, the first thing I'm going to do is disconnect the motor from the game's harness. Now I can use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the two 832 bolts located on the left side of the assembly. These bolts are used to mount the mirror bracket to the bottom of the cabinet. Those bolts screw into two T-nuts located underneath. Now that the mirror assembly has been removed, I can set it aside along with its associated hardware and move on to the next step. Okay, so finally, last but not least, it's time to remove the mirror motor's triac board. First, I'm going to disconnect the two IDC connectors located at the rear of the board. These are the connectors closest to the subwoofer. These connectors plug into J1 and J2 respectively on the triac board. Once those connectors are removed, I can then use a quarter inch nut driver to remove the board from the side of the cabinet wall. So now that the triac board is out of the cabinet, I'm going to remove the four number six screws used to mount the board to the cabinet wall. These screws will be used later to mount the new interface board to the cabinet in the same location that the triac board was mounted. So I don't want to lose those screws. Okay, so that completes step one. With all of the original hologram parts removed from the game, I can now store those items in a box for safekeeping. And that way, if I ever want to reinstall the hologram, I can. So now it's time to move to step two of the installation process.